maybe a couple of S-turns rolling into this. We've got about 45 seconds to kill. Take a 0 4 five to be able to come back around. And From the front seats, you don't see a lot. You've got a lot of clouds. Once you come through the eye wall, you kind of have an epiphany of sorts because all of a sudden you go from zero visibility and everything's dark gray to you have this big stadium sometimes that it's just this wall of cloud that encompasses you and everything you're looking at. The more times we pass through the eye wall, the better they can calibrate exactly where the storm's moving. The center of that big space that you can see doesn't mean that that's the center of the storm. That, that zero wind spot can be 20, 30 miles towards one side or the other of the eye. They've had one C-130 go down back in the 80s. You're flying through stuff no one else flies through. It's not pretty. You'll have a, there'll be scenarios where the, the autopilot gets overpowered by the storm, it kicks off, and everything that you get trained to do all of a sudden has to kick in all at once because the plane's falling and you're just holding on looking for good air because when Mother Nature decides you're not going to fly, you're not going to fly. She's a little bit more violent than the rest of them have been. Some storms, like Katrina, for example, back in the, that was very, very big, but they said it was well organized and it was this very smooth to fly storm. Some of the smaller ones are a lot more violent. This one's big and it appears to be quite violent too. So we expect to get bounced around quite a bit. Yeah, so the top sons are nothing but a cardboard tube. They don't look like a whole lot. But we actually release them and they go all the way down to the sea surface and they basically make a vertical profile of the atmosphere. We always drop one in the eye and the most vital piece of information it gives us is the sea level pressure in the eye. What you always hear in the news when they say, oh, it's 920 millibars. It's a really good indicator of how strong the actual storm is. We're measuring wind speed sometimes in excess of 215 miles an hour, and that's an EF5 tornado. That doesn't leave much after it goes by. So you kind of remember pretty quick that it, as nice as this may be from a flying perspective and unique, it's not uh, it's not pretty for everyone that's going to be on the ground. So the data we collect, it kind of gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling afterwards that you're helping get people out of harm's way before anything bad happens to them.